stay a while and listen. Hello everybody, my name is Necraxis and I have a question for you. Are you prepared for Legion's story? Well, fret not, because today we continue our series catching up everybody on the goings-on in the new upcoming expansion. In today's episode, we're tackling the forgotten druid refuge, Valshara. Once, Valshara was the pinnacle of druidism on Azeroth, the place where the demigod Cenarius taught Malfurion about nature and where he became the first mortal druid. Now, the Dream Grove is the main refuge of druidism on the Broken Isles, with the bulk of the Night Elves at the Temple of Alun, safeguarding the pillar of creation here, the Tears of Alun. However, alone, they will stand no chance against the sheer might of the enemy flooding into Valshara, Xavius. Ten thousand years ago, Xavius was a Night Elf, the High Counselor to Queen Ajara, and the first individual that Sargeras, Lord of the Burning Legion, contacted on Azeroth. After Sargeras convinced him he was a god, Xavius introduced Ejara to Sargeras as well, and together sparked off the first Burning Legion invasion of Azeroth, the War of the Ancients. During the war, Xavius attempted to cut off access to the magical Well of Eternity from all but Ejara's forces, yet was stopped by Malfurion Stormrage, the first mortal druid. Malfurion traversed the Emerald Dream, an ever-changing spirit world that represents a blueprint of Azeroth, if it was unchanged by mortals, to thwart Xavius' plans. As the two battled, Xavius' spell backfired, destroying his own tower and claiming Xavius' life in the process. But Sargeras was not satisfied with Xavius' failure. He gave the Night Elf another chance, resurrecting him, but twisting him into a horned and hooved demon, the first satyr. Xavius set out spreading the satyr curse to his fellow Night Elves, transforming them into satyrs as well, before he once again was killed by a Malfurion. This time with the help of Chandra's Feathermoon. Malfurion used the wooden arrow that Chandra shot into Xavius to grow a tree inside the satyr's body, sapping his life force and plunging him to the bottom of the sea when the land splintered following the sundering. Ten thousand years passed before Xavius was heard from again. Somehow the satyr had survived death a second time as his soul entered the Emerald Dream and began corrupting it on behalf of an unseen nefarious force hinted to be the Old Gods. Here, Xavius was revived once more, this time becoming the Nightmare Lord, a fearsome demon capable of twisting the pure nature energy of the Emerald Dream into the corrupted Emerald Nightmare. But as destiny seems to dictate, Malfurion Stormrage was there to stop him once more. After the death of the Lich King, the Emerald Nightmare began seeping into Azeroth. The majority of Azeroth's citizens were forced into a Nightmare Dream state, which they could not wake up from. Malfurion and what few allies did not succumb to the Emerald Nightmare entered the Dream. There they defeated the Nightmare Lord and pushed him back into the Rift of Alm, a small portion of the Dream completely corrupted by the Old Gods. For a third time, Xavius has been defeated. Now with the Legion's return once more, Xavius has unleashed a massive invasion of Valshara with his satyr army and the Emerald Nightmare in the Chaos. Spreading like a plague upon the land, the nightmare consumes all it touches, corrupting the very life and land of Valshara into nightmare creatures. Even the powerful wild gods are being affected by the nightmare, triggering a frantic response from the druids and a rising horde and alliance forces. Malfurion Stormrage has arrived back in Valshara to investigate the illness that is affecting Cenarius, his old mentor and demigod. And as Xavius and the nightmare begin quickly spreading throughout Valshara, nobody is safe. Not Malfurion, not Cenarius, and not even Ysera, the green dragon aspect who has arrived to help as well. The Alliance and Horde need to help the Night Elves and their druids before the entire area is infested by the Nightmare Lord. Even if the Tears of Alun are successfully obtained, it will be all for naught if the Nightmare consumes the Broken Isles. Meanwhile, farther south, the Specter of Black Rook Hold still holds over the land. This Night Elven fortress was carved out of a mountain, and served as a military base that was so unassailable, the Legion could not penetrate it during the War of the Ancients. It has been abandoned for millennia, until the arrival of Gul'dan. The Warlock traveled there with Illidan's body he had stolen from the vault of the Wardens. Attempting to sever the Demon Hunter's soul from his body, for some nefarious purpose, Gul'dan's ritual awoke the ghosts of Black Rook Hold, twisting and confusing their memories. Now these ghostly Night Elven defenders are striking out all around the fortress, attacking without distinction. The unlucky closest targets are a small Gilnean city named Bradensbrook. Bradensbrook was founded by refugees who fled Gilneas during the Third War and established the city and lived in peace on the Broken Isles. 
until now. In addition, Maiev Shadow Song, ever watchful jailer of Illidan, has tracked Gul'dan to the fortress, but has disappeared. Now her brother Gerard has arrived in search of his sister. Somehow, the Alliance and Horde need to push back the Nightmare, perhaps even entering the Emerald Dream itself to do so, while also solving the mystery of Blackrook Hold. Illidan's body in the hands of Gul'dan does not bode well, as the newly risen hostile ghosts of Night Elven defenders can attest. Helping Gerard Shadow Song, we will need to save the city of Bradensbrook and find out how to quell the angered ghost spirits before they whittle away too many of our defenses against the Legion and Xavius. And now, you are prepared. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you found this video informative or entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. If you have any questions or feedback, positive or negative, leave those in the comments below and I'll do my best to address them. But as always, the best way to help me out is by sharing this video with anybody you think would find it interesting. I am always looking to introduce more people to the lore, so if I can do that for even one person, this whole YouTube thing will be worth it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you all next time for part four. Stay awesome, and yeah, farewell.